Summary Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before, Dr. Julie Smith. Book link click here here is a summary of the introduction. The author is a clinical psychologist who started making short videos on mental health education and sharing insights from psychology. She found that many people benefited from simply understanding how their minds and emotions work and learning skills to manage them. This book provides details and explanations that cannot fit into 60-second videos. It shares tools, techniques and concepts from psychology and the author's experience as a therapist. These life skills, not therapy, can help build resilience and well-being. The book is not meant as therapy or to delve into the past. It focuses on providing practical tools to help readers better understand and influence their mental health and emotions. These tools can help build strength and well-being under challenging times and good times. Mental health is compared to physical health. Just as we work on nutrition and exercise for our body, we can work on skills and tools for our mind and mental health. This can help prevent problems and help us cope better when facing challenges. Even when we feel good, strengthening our mental health with these tools helps build resilience. The tools and techniques in the book are evidence-based but also proven in the author's experience helping clients. Readers can focus on the sections most relevant to their needs but are encouraged to continue using and strengthening the skills even when they feel better. This continued practice helps ensure the well-being and the ability to handle future difficulties. The key message is that we can influence our mental health and emotions more than many realize. We can build strength, resilience, and well-being with understanding and the right tools. However, these insights and skills may have yet to be shared with many people. There is hope for improving your mood and well-being. It requires self-awareness, guidance, and the willingness to struggle to build strength. The author acknowledges that she does not have a perfect, problem-free life. She is a psychologist and human who continues to learn and face struggles. The tools and techniques she shares have helped her and her clients navigate difficulties. The book provides tools and skills, not answers or a cure. Regular practice of these tools is required. Mistakes and failures will happen, but you can always try again. These tools have helped the author and her clients. Everyone experiences low moods at times. It is normal but differs in frequency and severity for each person. Many hide it to meet others' expectations but suffer in silence. The mood is influenced by many factors, not just your brain. Mood comes from your internal and external environment, thoughts, actions, diet, relationships, etc. Your brain makes sense of all this information and guesses your mood. Your responses that influence your body and mind in an ongoing loop. To change your mood, you must address all these influences. Your thoughts influence your mood, but your mood also influences your thoughts, making negative thoughts more likely. You need more than just changing your thoughts. Engaging in enjoyable activities again can help improve your mood. In summary, self-awareness, guidance, and a willingness to work through struggles by using tools to positively influence your environment, thoughts, body, and actions can help build resilience and improve your mood and well-being. Progress will take effort and time. But there is hope. Feeling low urges us to do things that provide instant relief but often worsen our mood in the long run. Things like excessive alcohol, drug use, eating junk food, and watching TV for hours. Our coping strategies offer short-term relief but cost us in the long run. They prevent us from developing healthier ways of managing difficult emotions. Certain thought patterns are more likely when we feel low in mood. They include, mind reading, assuming we know what others think about us, usually negatively. This leads to seeking reassurance and feeling insecure. Overgeneralization, seeing one lousy event as a sign that the whole day or situation is hopeless. This leads to expecting the worst and feeling pessimistic. Negative filter, focusing on the negative parts of situations while ignoring the positive. This makes the world seem bleaker and amplifies feelings of sadness or irritability. Catastrophizing, expecting the worst possible outcome no matter how unlikely. This prevents us from seeing more moderate outcomes leading to anxiety and worry. Should statements, using words like should, must, or have to in ways that make us feel guilty or not good enough. This lowers self-esteem and mood. Negative self-labeling, calling ourselves hurtful names based on perceived mistakes or shortcomings. This damages our self-view and amplifies difficult emotions. These thought patterns are expected to experience but become more frequent and intense when the mood is low. Recognizing them is the first step to addressing them. We can challenge these thoughts and try to adopt more balanced thinking. Balanced thinking means considering other possible interpretations and explanations. It means using more moderate and less extreme language in our self-talk. The goal is to cultivate a more compassionate and constructive inner dialogue. Our thoughts are not always facts. 
our thinking can become more biased and hostile when we struggle with low moods. Common thought biases include, mind reading, assuming we know what others think of us, emotional reasoning, believing that what we feel reflects the truth, egocentric thinking, assuming others share our values and perspectives, all-or-nothing thinking, seeing things in extremes, for example, success or failure, musts and shoulds, having unrealistic expectations makes us feel like a failure. These thought biases narrow our thinking, intensify emotions, and worsen low mood. We cannot stop the thoughts, but we can manage our response. To address thought biases, notice them. This takes practice but we can reflect on thoughts, emotions, and sensations. Look for biases in hindsight or the moment. Label the biases. This helps us see thoughts as interpretations rather than facts. Consider alternatives. Look for other ways of viewing the situation that is more balanced and helpful. Build self-awareness. Keep a journal, talk to others or practice mindfulness. This helps us recognize thought patterns and step back from them. This is an ongoing process. We get better at spotting and managing thought biases over time and with regular practice. The key is recognizing that our thoughts are not always accurate reflections of reality. With awareness and effort, we can choose more helpful ways of thinking. Our thoughts can feel consuming when we are in a low mood, but we can gain distance from them using metacognition, the ability to observe our thinking processes. Thoughts are not facts. They are opinions, predictions and interpretations offered up by our brains. Our brain has limited information and takes shortcuts so that thoughts can be inaccurate or biased. We cannot control all the thoughts that pop into our heads, but we can choose how we respond to them. The power of any thought is in how much we buy into it and believe it to be meaningful or authentic. Mindfulness is a tool for observing your thoughts and strengthening your ability to notice a thought but not stick to it. It is about redirecting your attention on purpose. Your attention is power. Many people ignore drift, but we can choose where to focus. This helps determine our experience of life and our mood. It is essential to consider what you want, not just what you do not want. Many of us rarely ask ourselves what we want and need. Your attention helps create your experience, so direct it toward what you want. Mindfulness practice is like going to the gym for your mind. It strengthens your brain's ability to manage your attention and mood. Start with the simple steps provided. It does not have to be complicated or profound. Rumination is the process of churning thoughts over and over. Combined with negative and biased thinking styles, rumination can significantly worsen a low mood. Several strategies can help reduce rumination, challenge negative and irrational thoughts. Look for evidence that contradicts them. Focus on problem-solving rather than problem-dwelling. Take action and shift your attention to solutions. Engage in mindfulness or distraction techniques like exercise, social interaction, or hobbies. Limit the excess focus on emotions. While accepting your feelings, focus more on your values and the life you want. Emotions tend to pass in waves. Be kind to yourself. Self-criticism activates your threat system and fuels rumination. Practice self-compassion instead. During a low mood, it can be challenging to make good decisions. Aim for good enough decisions that move you in a positive direction rather than seeking perfection. Keep making decisions, however small. Doing nothing will worsen your mood. Even small positive actions help. Base decisions on your values and long-term well-being rather than your current emotions. Focus on self-care and health. Set small, consistent goals and habits. Make sustainable changes over time. Do not aim for extreme or unrealistic goals. Practice self-compassion. Notice self-critical thoughts but do not believe they are facts. Respond with kindness, as you would to someone you care about. Imagine speaking to yourself with the same compassion you would show someone you love. How would you want them to see themselves? Speak to yourself this way. The key steps are, keep making suitable enough decisions and take small actions focus on values and self-care rather than emotions set small, sustainable goals practice self-compassion and notice self-critical thoughts without believing them. Speak to yourself with kindness and compassion. Following these principles can help turn a bad day into a better one and improve your mood and well-being through consistent practice. The actions are simple but powerful. Regularly using these skills allows you to gain more control over your thoughts and emotions, even when times are difficult. We often neglect the basics that provide a strong foundation for our well-being. Things like exercise, sleep, diet, and social connection are not exciting or glamorous but are crucial defenses that keep us functioning well. Exercise, in particular, has potent antidepressant effects. It increases dopamine which improves your ability to experience pleasure and joy. Exercise does not have to be intense or at a gym. Light activities like walking, dancing, 
or yoga can significantly benefit mood and mental health. The focus on how exercise makes you feel has been neglected. Exercise outside in nature has additional benefits for mood. For those with depression, exercise in natural settings led to higher remission rates. Adding exercise to your life does not mean ultra-marathons. Start as small as possible with something you enjoy that can boost your mood. A slight, sustainable increase in activity can catalyze significant life changes. Exercise impacts the mind and body, releases feel-good hormones like endorphins reduces inflammation in the body and brain promotes growth of new neural pathways and the brain improves self-confidence and body image it provides an outlet for built-up mental and physical tension it helps you sleep better which further supports mood and mental health connects you to a community of exercising with others the basics are the foundations that keep you in the game. When life gets stressful, they are easy to neglect but essential for well-being. Aim for progress, not perfection. When one area slips, focus on the others. Over time, strengthening your defenses will change your life. There are countless ways to improve your mental health and well-being. Focus on making small changes in areas such as, sleep, Adequate sleep is essential for both physical and mental health. Lack of sleep increases vulnerability to illness. Focus on getting relaxing and rejuvenating sleep regularly. Make sleep a priority. Nutrition, what you eat impacts your mood and brain health. Focus on a balanced diet with whole foods, healthy fats and whole grains. Make small nutritional changes to support your well-being. Routine, a balanced routine provides predictability and comfort and allows for variety. Notice when your routine is often make efforts to re-establish balance. Small changes can have a significant impact. Human connection, nurturing relationships is one of the most potent tools for well-being. Try to connect with others even when you do not feel like it. Social interaction and support can lift your mood and benefit both parties. In summary, focus on self-care basics by making small, sustainable changes in sleep, nutrition, routine, and relationships. Your mental health and resilience will benefit from consistently nurturing your physical, emotional, and social needs. However, remember, perfection is not required, keep moving positively. Motivation is not a fixed trait. It fluctuates like our emotions. We can cultivate motivation by acting, even when not feeling like it. Doing small things that matter builds momentum. Exercise is one of the best ways to boost motivation. Even light activity helps. Find a movement you enjoy so you will stick with it. Stay connected to your goals and reasons for making a change. Review them often to maintain motivation and momentum. Focus on progress, not perfection. Celebrate small wins along the way. This fuels motivation for continued progress. Surround yourself with motivated people. Their energy and enthusiasm rub off and lifts you. Take a flexible and balanced approach. Strict rules sap motivation. Be kind to yourself if you slip up. Just get back to your goals. Reflect on how far you have come. Looking at the progress you have made, however small, reignites your motivation and commitment. To maintain your well-being and achieve your goals, staying connected to them daily through simple acts like journaling for a few minutes is essential. Keep the tasks small and focused. Significant changes do not happen overnight. Take it one step at a time. Reward yourself for small wins along the way to stay motivated. To resist temptation and follow through. Manage your stress, exercise, sleep well, and eat healthy to maximize your willpower and decision-making ability. Change how you view failure. Respond with self-compassion instead of harsh self-criticism. Self-criticism leads to less motivation and poorer outcomes. Self-compassion helps you get back on track. When you fail at something, notice the emotions and how they feel in your body. Observe your self-critical thoughts and the impact they have. Consider how you would respond to someone you care about experiencing the same failure. Why would you show them compassion? Think about how you would want them to view the setback to get back on track. Then apply that same compassionate and solution-focused perspective to yourself. Feelings of motivation come and go. You cannot rely on motivation alone. To get things done even when you do not feel like it, question the urges and impulses that arise from your feelings. They are suggestions, not commands. You have a choice in how you respond. Focus on your goals and values instead of your feelings. Take actions aligned with what matters to you. Start small and build up your willpower. Be sure to aim for significant life changes. Make continuous progress over time through consistency and habit building. Reward yourself for achieved milestones to stay motivated for the next steps. We have urges to relieve discomfort or seek rewards. However, we can choose not to act on those urges. The opposite action skill involves doing the opposite of what your emotions urge you to do. This requires mindfulness to notice your urges and choose your actions. 
establishing new habits requires repetition to create new neural pathways. Tips for building habits, make the new behavior easy, set up your environment for success, make plans, reward yourself, clarify your motivations, and see the change as part of your identity. Persevering for long-term goals requires balancing effort and rest. Take natural breaks, not just check email. Use small rewards along the way to stay motivated. Gratitude practices like appreciating small accomplishments and keeping a gratitude journal help replenish your motivation and willingness to put in the effort. Pre-planning for obstacles and temptations makes it easier to stick to your goals in vulnerable moments. Have crisis plans in place. Connecting your goals to your sense of identity helps provide motivation, especially when your motivation is low. You will be more likely to persist if you see yourself as someone who does X habit or has Y quality. Our emotions are not the enemy, they exist to provide us with information about our experiences and environment. While we cannot directly choose our emotions, we have more influence than we realize. We can learn to change our relationship with emotions rather than trying to eliminate them. Pushing or blocking emotions away does not work and often makes them feel more overwhelming. The key is to make emotions a welcome part of life, pay attention to them, and take action to influence them healthily. This means, not trying to resist. Avoid or rationalize emotions away learning the triggers and cycles that drive your emotions practicing self-care strategies like sleep, diet, exercise, and leisure catching unhelpful thoughts about emotions and challenging them taking gradual action even when you do not feel motivated finding healthy outlets to express emotions, like art or writing connecting with others who understand what you are going through the goal is not an absence of painful emotions but learning to live fully even when they are present. By gaining this level of emotional intelligence, life's challenges become more manageable. Emotional pain is an inevitable human experience. There is no way to make it all go away. Pushing emotions away or bottling them up often causes more problems than accepting them. Allow emotions to rise and fall naturally. Emotions are not facts. They are perspectives that we can choose to buy into or question. Question thoughts and beliefs to gain a more balanced view. Use awareness and mindfulness to notice emotions, thoughts, and behaviors. This helps you pause before acting impulsively. You can then choose responses aligned with your values. See emotions as experiences that pass through you. Learn to sit with them rather than block or avoid them. Notice what they tell you about your needs. Meet those needs through self-care. Increase your emotional vocabulary. Name specific emotions. This helps you better understand what you feel and choose helpful responses. Take a big picture view. Step back and consider whether current thoughts and actions align with the person you want to be. Make changes as needed. Focus on self-care, sleep, nutrition, exercise, and managing stress. This provides a foundation for emotional health and the ability to handle challenges. Emotional language and the words we use to describe our feelings significantly impact our experience and management of emotions. A limited emotional vocabulary is associated with difficulties regulating emotions and a higher risk of depression. We can build our emotional vocabulary over time through the following. Getting specific about emotions rather than using broad terms like happy or sad. Using combinations of emotional words and physical sensations to describe feelings. There is no right or wrong way to label emotions. We can make up our own words or borrow words from other languages. We are exploring new experiences and finding ways to describe them. This exposes us to new perspectives and new words to describe them. I am learning new emotional words from books, music movies, etc. using tools like the feeling wheel to help find more specific words to describe emotions. Journaling about both positive and negative experiences to process emotions. Focusing only on negative experiences can skew our view. They share their emotional experiences with others and learn from how they describe their feelings. We can adopt new words from each other. We practiced putting emotions into words, even if we first struggled. Like any skill, our ability to label and describe emotions improves with practice. The key benefits of improving our emotional vocabulary are, better ability to regulate emotions which leads to less stress and distress, more flexibility and effectiveness in responding to life's challenges, deeper self-understanding and insight into the experiences that shape us, stronger connections with others as we can better share our inner experiences. Grief is a typical human experience when we lose someone or something meaningful. It involves a range of emotions, not just sadness. Your body responds to grief as well. The stress response is triggered, and the pain can feel physical and emotional. Things that help with grief do not make the pain disappear but help us process it healthily. Grief can feel intolerable, so we often block it out. However, blocking emotions also blocks our ability to find meaning and engage with life. 
If we suppress grief by keeping busy or numbing ourselves, it will eventually explode, leaving us struggling. Unresolved grief can lead to health issues, depression, anxiety, relationship problems, and anger or bitterness. There is no right way to grieve. We all grieve differently. Be gentle with yourself and avoid comparing yourself to others. Talking to others who have had a similar loss can help. Join a grief support group. Expressing grief through creative acts like art, music, writing or gardening can help. Take care of yourself by maintaining a routine, eating healthy meals, limiting alcohol, and exercising. Ask others for practical help if you need it. Grief is a journey, not something to get over. Be patient and allow the process to unfold. Significant endings can trigger a grief reaction even without death. Grief is a typical human experience. The pain can be emotional and physical. Things that help with grief do not make the pain disappear or force us to move on. Blocking out grief can lead to problems. The stages of grief describe everyday experiences but are not linear or prescriptive. They include, denial, helps us survive overwhelming pain but fades over time. Anger, can mask deeper emotions like pain or fear. Expressing anger healthfully helps. Bargaining, ruminating over what-ifs and self-blame. They wanted things back to how they were. Depression, a normal response to loss, not necessarily a mental illness. We need to soothe ourselves but also feel the pain. Acceptance, liking the situation is different, moments of living in the new reality and yearning for what was lost. Grief comes in waves. The tasks of mourning are accepting the loss, feeling the pain, adjusting to life without the loved one, and finding a connection to them in a new way. Moving between feeling the pain of grief and doing things to restore and distract ourselves is essential. Pushing pain away constantly is unsustainable. It is essential to allow yourself to feel whatever emotions arise, including joy or laughter. All emotions are part of grieving. It is normal to feel guilty experiencing moments of joy after a loss. However, allowing yourself small moments of happiness is essential for grieving. Over time, you learn to engage with life again while still honoring the memory of the loved one you lost. Take small steps each day. Do not remember to underestimate the power of little progress. Meet each stage of grief where you are and go at your own pace. Have no expectations. Expectations about how you should feel or heal only make grief harder. All feelings and ups and downs are normal. Cultivate compassion for yourself. Express your feelings. Talking, writing, art, music, etc. can help. Safely release emotion. If it is too hard to talk, write. Get thoughts and feelings out. Process the pain to grief. Remember and keep living. Engaging in the present and remembering the past can both be painful. Over time, you find ways to do both, celebrate their life and keep living. Pain and joy can coexist. The wound remains but you grow around it. You always remember but build a life around the loss. Stay connected to them but find meaning and purpose. Seek professional help if needed. Therapy can help you work through grief in a safe space. A therapist can help make sense of feelings, teach coping skills, understand the grief process, and provide judgment-free support. The pillars of strength help rebuild life after loss, relationship with the deceased, find new ways to connect relationship with self, listen to your own needs expressing grief, allow yourself to feel, there is no right way. Time, drop expectations and go slowly mind and body, take care of yourself physically and mentally limits, set boundaries when others advise you structure. Balance flexibility and routine focusing, observe feelings and sensations to build awareness, criticism can trigger our stress response and paralyzes us in pursuing what matters to us. Lacking the skills to handle criticism healthily can be costly. We care about how others perceive us as it signals acceptance or rejection. Rejection threatens our survival and health. Caring for what others think also helps us function socially. Our self-concept depends on what we think others think of us. People-pleasing is consistently putting others before yourself, even if it harms you. It prevents expressing needs, likes slash dislikes, and holding boundaries. Fear of disapproval persists as there is always a chance to displease someone. Spotlight effect, we overestimate how much others focus on us. Socially anxious people focus more on how others perceive them. Confident people focus outward. To handle criticism, build tolerance for helpful criticism. Be open to learning from feedback. Let go of criticism reflecting others' values, know which opinions matter most. Most critical people are self-critical. Criticism reflects how they speak to themselves, not your worth. People criticize based on their rules, so you cannot please everyone. Context matters but is not always available. Criticism attacking your worth causes shame, an intensely painful feeling. Shame triggers anger, fear, disgust, 
and self-attack. We resort to addictive behaviors for relief, build shame resilience, know your shame triggers, the reality checks criticism and judgments, focus on behaviors and consequences, not name-calling, accept being imperfect, learn from experiences, mind your self-talk. Criticism always hurts a little. Harsh comments replay in your head. Pay attention to self-talk and be gentle with yourself. Mistakes do not define your worth. See feedback as data, not judgment. Stay open and curious. Living confidently means tolerating discomfort and vulnerability, not eliminating fear. Confidence comes from courage and experience, not comfort. To build confidence, we must go where we currently have none. Staying in our comfort zone does not expand our confidence. The learning model shows how we can gradually expand our confidence by moving from our comfort zone to our stretch zone. Each time we step into the stretch zone, we build courage and experience. Building confidence requires self-acceptance, self-compassion, and learning to value vulnerability and fear. It is a balancing act. Critical ingredients for building confidence include, recognizing that you can improve with effort, tolerating discomfort, committing to self-compassion, overcoming shame and self-criticism, and developing a pattern of stepping into fear and stepping out again. Self-esteem efforts focusing on positive self-views and success often lead to unhealthy social comparison and a need to see ourselves as superior. This approach does not build confidence. Confidence comes from who you are, your character, values, and how you treat people, not what you achieve or how much better you are than others. Focus on living according to your values and having integrity. This builds confidence from the inside out. Confidence gives us the courage to accept ourselves as we are, imperfections and all, and still believe we are enough. It comes from self-acceptance, not self-judgment. Self-esteem based on success and achievement is unstable and can negatively impact relationships. Studies show that despite popular belief, high self-esteem does not necessarily lead to better outcomes or relationships. It can correlate with arrogance, prejudice and discrimination. Positive affirmations may work for those with high self-esteem but can backfire for those with low self-esteem by highlighting negative self-beliefs. It is better to acknowledge negative feelings and show self-compassion. Building confidence comes from taking action and creating evidence of your abilities, not just repeating affirmations. To build confidence in fearful situations, start small by facing manageable challenges and gradually progressing to more difficult ones. This helps you get comfortable with the discomfort. Use self-compassion to be your nurturer rather than a critic. Failure hurts, but avoiding it is addictive and keeps us stuck. We cannot control how others respond to our failures. The only thing we can control is how we respond to ourselves. Rather than relying on others, commit to tending to yourself with compassion after failure. Your mistakes and failures do not define you. They do not reflect your worth or personality. How others respond says more about them. The summary covers the key points around self-esteem, confidence building, facing fear and failure, and self-compassion. The assistant extracts these main concepts from the overall passage to provide a high-level overview for the reader. Developing self-acceptance requires understanding yourself through self-reflection and awareness. This means noticing your behaviors, thoughts, emotions, values, and needs. Some key steps include, paint a picture of what self-acceptance would look like in your life. How would you think, speak, and act differently? Make a plan to start living according to self-acceptance. Accept all parts of yourself, including emotions you may struggle with. Notice how you respond to different emotions and meet them with compassion. Ask yourself, where do I feel this emotion in my body? What thoughts are linked to this feeling? What urges come up? What does this part of me want to do? What does this part of me need? Provide compassion and acceptance for all your emotions and parts of yourself. Self-acceptance is unconditional and constant work. You never fully arrive but continue practicing each day. Self-acceptance does not mean laziness or lack of motivation. Self-acceptance gives you the freedom and confidence to grow, change, and pursue meaningful goals. You are less fearful of failure and more willing to persevere. Anxiety is a normal response from the brain's alarm system. It is trying to keep you safe based on its available information. The urge to alleviate anxiety quickly often keeps the anxiety going in the long run. Avoiding the fear or instantly calming yourself down will not help overcome the anxiety. The way to overcome anxiety is through gradual exposure. This means, I am facing the fear in a controlled way. Go towards the fear rather than avoiding it. Allow the anxiety to be present without trying to make it go away instantly. Make it disappear instantly. Sit with the discomfort. Focus on breathing slowly and deeply to stay in control of your response. Remind yourself that the fear is exaggerated and that you are safe. 
repeat the exposure over and over until the anxiety starts to lessen. Your body will habituate to the situation and learn that there is no real threat. Anxiety tends to spike and then come back down. Ride the wave, it will pass. The more you practice, the less intense the spikes over time. Overcoming anxiety is difficult and uncomfortable, but exposure therapy is very effective. You have to face your fears one small step at a time. However, the rewards of overcoming anxiety and living freely are huge. With practice, your anxiety can disappear. That is the critical process for making anxiety disappear in the long run. It requires facing discomfort head-on through gradual exposure rather than avoiding it or trying to feel better instantly. Over time, the anxiety loses its power and intensity. However, it takes practice and persistence. When anxiety is triggered, you start breathing more quickly. This fuels the survival response. Slowing your breathing can calm the body and mind. Practicing slow breathing techniques is a great way to manage anxiety. They work instantly and can be done anywhere. Square breathing is an effective technique. Focus on a square object. Breathe in for 4 seconds, tracing your eyes up. Hold for 4 seconds, tracing across. Breathe out for 4 seconds, tracing down. Hold for 4 seconds, tracing back. Repeat and continue focusing on the square. It takes time for your body to respond. Practice daily, even when not anxious. Exercise is another instant anxiety relief tool. Anxiety triggers a fight or flight response, filling your muscles with oxygen and adrenaline. Exercise burns off this excess energy and follows the natural course of your threat response. Slow, controlled breathing and exercise are two easy ways to relieve anxiety. Regularly practicing these techniques, incredibly when not actively anxious, can build your ability to stay calm during anxiety-provoking situations. Exercise and physical movement can help you use your body's energy and stress hormones to calm anxiety. Even short periods of exercise on a stressful day can help relieve anxiety and make it easier to relax and sleep. Regular exercise also helps prevent anxiety and improves your mental health over the long run. When anxious, our breathing becomes faster and shallower. To calm down, take slower, deeper breaths, making the out-breath longer than the in-breath. This can help lower anxiety. Anxious thoughts are not facts. They are guesses, stories, and theories created by your brain. The power of these thoughts comes from how much you believe them, not because they are true. To reduce their power, get distance from your thoughts. Notice them but do not get caught up in them. Use mindful awareness and label anxious thoughts as just thoughts. Speak about them in a distanced way, for example, I am having thoughts about failure instead of I will fail. Write down your thoughts to gain perspective. Seeing them on paper helps you step back from them. Spot bias thoughts like, catastrophizing, jumping to the worst conclusion. These thoughts predict the worst but are not the only possibility. Personalizing, assuming events are because of you with no evidence. There are many possible explanations unrelated to you. Mental filter, focusing only on negative information that confirms your anxiety and ignoring information that contradicts it. Try to notice the filter and consider the full range of information. Overgeneralizing, applying one event to all areas of your life. This amplifies anxiety and often leads to avoidance, creating more anxiety. Labeling, judging yourself globally based on one event or period. People and events are complex, no one can be reduced to a single label. The key is recognizing these thought patterns, gaining perspective, and considering more balanced and realistic alternatives. With practice, you can overcome their power over your anxiety and mood. Labeling yourself as an anxious person can negatively impact your identity and expectations for how you will feel and act. Emotions and behaviors are temporary, they do not define who you are permanently. When you notice yourself labeling your identity, challenge that thought. It is harder to change an identity than to reduce anxiety. Thought challenging involves evaluating anxious thoughts to determine if they reflect reality. Ask yourself questions to weigh the evidence that the thought is factual versus not factual. This can help loosen belief in the thought and open you to alternate interpretations. However, if this leads to endless internal debate, Use other techniques like distancing yourself from the thought. Your attention is like a spotlight, you can control where you focus it, but you cannot control what thoughts come on stage. When you focus on anxious thoughts, they feed back to your brain and body, ramping up your anxiety. Shifting your attention to other thoughts can help turn down your anxiety response. You will still be aware of the anxious thoughts, but without attention, they have less power over you. Repeatedly focusing on and ruminating over feared future events causes your body to respond as if they are happening. This also helps build mental concepts and expectations that your brain can recreate easily in the future. Where you direct your attention helps construct your experience of the world. 
gaining control of your attention is critical to managing your emotional experience. To shift away from anxious thoughts, focus on cultivating a calming stream of thoughts instead. Speak to yourself with kindness and compassion. Though it takes practice, changing how you talk to yourself can shift your brain chemistry and emotional state. Compassion is not about denying there are things to fear but instead affirming you can handle them. Receiving compassion from others or yourself reduces your threat response, making you feel safer facing difficulties. One day of self-compassion will not replace a lifetime of self-criticism, but it can be life-changing with practice. Compassion is not always easy, but it is powerful. The fear of death is universal and inevitable. It threatens our sense of meaning and purpose. For some, fear of death directly causes anxiety and worry. For others, it fuels other fears like health anxiety or panic. Avoiding thoughts of death offers only temporary relief. We must find a way to accept death as confident while living fully. Confronting death through exercises like imagining your funeral can help clarify what gives life meaning. This meaning can then empower how we choose to live. Unrealistic beliefs about death, for example, my family will not cope or it will be torturous, worse than the fear. We need to challenge these beliefs. Reassurance that death is unlikely right now is not helpful. We know it is inevitable, but we do not know when. Deep acceptance of death, while finding meaning in life, helps to overcome unrealistic fear of the inevitable. A wise and compassionate inner coach would say something like, I know this is difficult, but death comes for us all. The fear you feel is normal and human. However, unrealistic worries will only make things more complicated. Find strength in accepting what you cannot change. Take comfort knowing this fear is shared by all. Challenged thoughts amplify the fear by asking what evidence supports them. Your family's resilience may surprise you. Give life meaning by clarifying what matters most. Then commit to living according to your values. Action conquers fear. Though death may come without warning, fill each day with purpose. Find meaning and connections. Be kind. You have faced hard times before and found courage. That same strength lives within you now. Compassion for yourself and others will light the path ahead. You have within you the power to walk it. Stress and anxiety are often used interchangeably but refer to different experiences. Stress prepares us to respond to environmental demands. It releases energy to increase alertness and readiness to act. Anxiety refers more specifically to feelings of fear and excessive worry. It is associated with predictions that we cannot cope with. The physiological mechanisms behind stress and anxiety are the same. However, we interpret them differently based on the context. Stress can be interpreted positively when our internal state matches environmental demands, for example, feeling pumped for competition. It feels negative when there is a mismatch, for example, tired but wired at night. The stress response varies. Hormones, cardiovascular changes, and other factors produce psychological and behavioral effects. We feel stress to prepare for action, for example, waking up, work tasks, and driving. Cortisol releases energy. The heart and lungs work faster. Adrenaline helps muscles use energy efficiently. While simplified as fight or flight, the stress response varies. Hormone ratios and physiological changes shape different experiences and urges. Anxiety refers more to fear and worry. The stress response is given different meanings, for example, fear of hearing a glass break versus stress of unemployment or work-life balance. The former elicits fight or flight, the latter does not. Stress and anxiety are both states of alertness. However, anxiety involves fearful predictions that we cannot cope with. Stress can have different meanings depending on context. Stress is not inherently wrong. In the short term, stress has positive effects and helps us perform at our best. However, prolonged or chronic stress can damage our health and well-being. When stress is sustained over long periods without rest or replenishment can lead to burnout. Signs of burnout include feelings of emotional exhaustion, detachment from others, lack of accomplishment, and lack of competence. Burnout often results from a chronic mismatch between a person and critical factors like control, feeling a need for more control or resources to meet demands, reward, lack of financial, social, or other reward slash recognition, community, lack of social support or sense of belonging, fairness, perceived inequality in how demands slash resources are distributed, values, demands that conflict with one's values, Burnout is a serious health issue, and anyone experiencing signs of burnout should take action to prevent further damage to their well-being. Reducing stressors and replenishing your resources are crucial to recovering from burnout. While we cannot eliminate stress from life entirely, we need to find the right balance, 
enough to keep life engaging but not so much that we experience the damaging effects of chronic stress and burnout. Managing stress and restoring equilibrium is critical to overall health and well-being. We need to find the right balance in managing stress. While we should aim to minimize stress when possible, we must also accept that some stressors are unavoidable or necessary. The key is to manage chronic or long-term stress, which can have damaging health effects. Signs of chronic stress include, disturbed sleep changes in appetite irritability and problems in relationships difficulty concentrating feeling overwhelmed by usually manageable tasks persistent headaches or dizziness muscle tension and pain stomach issues reliance on unhealthy coping mechanisms like smoking or drinking to address chronic stress. Practice breathing techniques like making your exhales longer than your inhales. This can help lower your heart rate and activate your body's relaxation response. Connect with others. Social support can help mitigate the effects of stress. Shift your mindset to focus on goals bigger than yourself. When you frame stressful events or tasks as contributing to something meaningful, it helps give you purpose and resilience. Ask yourself how your efforts fit your values and how they might help others. Take practical steps to establish boundaries and self-care. Say no when you can, and make time for rest and enjoyment. Address any unhealthy habits that add to your stress load. Seek professional help if needed. Speaking to a therapist or counselor can help give you strategies and guidance for better managing chronic stress. The key message is that some stress is unavoidable, but we have many tools and techniques to prevent it from becoming unhealthy or overwhelming. By maintaining self-awareness, balancing demands with self-care, connecting to purpose, and practicing active relaxation, we can make stress work for us rather than against us. You cultivate awareness and acceptance of your moment-to-moment -moment experience with meditation and mindfulness practices. The goal is to observe your thoughts and feelings without judgment and find clarity. By doing so, you are developing skills to better cope with stress and negative emotions. Some key things to keep in mind, start with small doses, like 10 to 15 minutes a day. Even short breaks can help shift your mindset and reduce stress. There are many types of meditation to try, from focused attention on the breath to compassion meditation to yoga nidra. Find what works for you. Meditation is a practice. Do not judge yourself if you struggle or your mind wanders. Gently bring your focus back to the present moment. Apply mindfulness to daily activities like walking, showering, or brushing your teeth. This helps integrate the benefits into your everyday life. Seek out awe-inspiring experiences which can shift your perspective and ease stress and worry. Connecting with nature is one way to cultivate more awe. Connecting with others is vital for coping with stress. Social support helps buffer the negative impacts of stress. Set meaningful goals focused on personal growth and contributing value to others. This provides motivation and purpose to persevere in difficult times. Learn tools like box breathing to activate your body's relaxation response when stressful situations arise. Staying calm and focused helps you respond constructively. The overarching themes are accepting what you cannot change, maintaining an optimistic and purposeful mindset, strengthening your social connections, and using techniques like meditation and mindfulness to build resilience in the face of stress and challenges. The key is practicing these skills regularly to call upon them when it counts. With time and consistency, they will become second nature. Does this help summarize what you aim to focus on and the meaning these efforts have for you? Let me know if you have any other questions. High pressure situations like job interviews or exams can induce stress. The key is to use the stress to your advantage instead of trying to eliminate it. See stress as an asset that helps you focus and perform. This mindset shift helps you feel less worried and more confident. Change your language and thoughts about stress. Replace phrases like try your best despite the stress with use the stress to energize you and help you do your best. This reinforces that stress can be helpful. Simply reminding yourself of this can improve your performance by 33%. Choose affirmations that are specific, concrete, and instructional. They should identify what to focus on in the process to follow. Vividly describe the emotional state you want to achieve. This helps direct your thoughts and actions. Reframe sensations of stress as determination or challenge instead of a threat. This shifts your perception without denying the reality of the feelings. The new framing helps you embrace the feelings instead of pushing them away. Widen your visual focus when stressed to calm your mind. Look around at your surroundings instead of tunnel vision. This accesses brain circuits that regulate stress and alertness, making you more comfortable with the stress response. The stress response continues, but your mind is calmer. Focus on the process, not potential outcomes, to overcome the fear of failure. Build familiarity with the process through practice. This gives you guiding statements to focus on during the challenge and builds trust in the process. Reframe failure to reduce self-attack. 
View failure as imperfect and human instead of a reflection of your self-worth. Feel guilty about a specific mistake instead of calling yourself a failure. Take accountability but with self-compassion, focusing on the behavior, not your character. The fundamental techniques are changing your mindset, using helpful language, reframing unhelpful thoughts, focusing on the process, and taking a balanced perspective on failure. These tools can help you use stress to your advantage during high-pressure situations. Happiness is not a constant state of pleasure and positivity. Emotions fluctuate in response to our experiences, beliefs, and environment. Feeling a range of pleasant and unpleasant emotions is normal and human. Chasing a fairy tale notion of constant happiness can leave us feeling like we have failed when we feel down. We may worry we have a mental health problem when we are just experiencing a typical human experience. Meaning and purpose are more critical for well being than happiness alone. Clarifying and living according to our core values gives life meaning, even during difficult times. Values are not the same as goals. Values are principles that guide how we want to live our life. They provide an ongoing path or direction. Goals are concrete targets we set along the way. Values give our goals meaning and purpose. When we lose connection with our values, life can feel aimless and empty. Recognizing our core values helps provide direction and motivation. It also helps us accept difficulties, knowing we are on the right path. The things that bring us the most happiness and meaning, like close relationships, also bring moments of pain, fear, and upset. You cannot have one without the other. A meaningful life will feel a range of emotions. The key message is that well-being comes from living according to our values and accepting human emotions. Constant happiness is unrealistic, and the pursuit of it can be counterproductive. Find meaning and purpose, set values guided goals, and learn to navigate difficulties. This leads to a life well lived. Values are what you find meaningful and purposeful in life. They guide your choices and actions. Your values can change over time as you go through life experiences. It is essential to regularly check in on your values to ensure you live according to what currently matters most to you. There are exercises you can do to gain clarity on your values like, identifying values important to your life, relationships, work, health, leisure, etc., rating how important those values are to you and how well you live according to them. Looking at any significant differences can show you areas that need more focus. You are using a value star to map how you live according to values and six key domains and see if your star is uneven, indicating domains needing more attention. Determining which values feel truly your own and which feel more imposed by others is essential. Clarifying this can help you understand why some areas of life feel less meaningful or fulfilling. Some suggested questions to help explore your values include, how would you approach daily life if you were to look back on this time and feel proud of how you face challenges? Focus on your choices and attitude. What do you want to stand for in treating yourself and your growth? What kind of person do you want to be for others? How do you want to contribute to them? How do you want others to feel when around you? What do you want to represent to them? If you only live once, what impact do you want to have? Would you still be doing what you are doing if no one knew? What is one value you want to bring to your choices and actions today or this week? Living according to your values, whatever happens around you, helps life feel more meaningful and purposeful. Clarifying them and checking in regularly keeps you focused on what matters most. Relationships require work to be prosperous and healthy. Relationships expected to experience difficulties, but trying to come back together and improve the connection is critical. Merely being in a relationship is not enough for well-being and happiness. The quality of relationships and the intentional choices we make about them have a significant impact. We are responsible for ourselves but cannot force others to change. It is acceptable to end harmful relationships. Support services can help. Improving relationships starts with self-care and understanding your needs and patterns. Communication, expressing needs, and building closeness are skills that can be developed. Our attachment styles originate in childhood based on experiences with caregivers but can be adapted. Anxious, avoidant, secure, and disorganized attachment styles influence how we relate in adult relationships. Awareness and conscious effort can help shift behaviors. Small, intentional, consistent actions to achieve your values and relationship goals can create lasting change. Reflecting on the big picture and how current choices align can help guide daily decisions. For satisfaction and happiness in a relationship, the most significant factors are expressing affection, spending quality time together, developing meaningful conversations, sharing new experiences, expressing appreciation for your partner, maintaining physical intimacy, and feeling emotionally supported. These require ongoing effort and choice. 
The quality of a friendship depends on the effort put into developing and maintaining it. Focusing on strengthening the friendship by spending time together, showing compassion and respect, getting to know each other well, and expressing appreciation can help build a close and lasting connection. These actions make it easier to overcome challenges and disagreements. Disconnection from ourselves, our emotions, and our loved ones has negative consequences. Social media, work, and perfectionism tempt us to avoid vulnerability. To build meaningful connections, we should develop self-awareness, understand our cycles and vulnerabilities, then change to become the person we want to be, focus on our boundaries and needs, be emotionally responsive, reconnect when feeling isolated or distant, respond to bids for connection with sensitivity, kindness, and compassion, remain engaged and attentive, complain respectfully, express frustrations while also showing compassion and care, accept ourselves and our partners despite mistakes. Have difficult conversations with care, focusing on specific behaviors and needs rather than personal attacks. Repair connections when needed. Express gratitude. Please pay attention to the good in our partners and appreciate them. This shifts our emotional state and behavior. Share meaning and values. Understand how our values and life goals align or differ. Compromise when possible. Support what is meaningful to our partner, even if it is not as meaningful to us. Clarity on shared values guides challenges. In summary, Friendships require effort and commitment to develop closeness, overcome challenges, and maintain a meaningful connection. Focusing on self-awareness, emotional responsiveness, effective communication, gratitude, and shared meaning can help build high-quality, long-lasting friendships. Our relationships and mental health are deeply connected. Working on self-improvement helps relationships, and strong relationships support well-being. Attachment styles from childhood often influence relationships as adults. Seeking professional support for mental health concerns is essential. Do so as early as possible. Lack of access to mental health care is a significant problem. In these cases, learn as much as possible and rely on community support. Exercise, diet, mindfulness, and social interaction can all positively influence mental health. Specific therapies like CBT can be helpful for conditions like depression and anxiety. There are many small ways we can support our own and others' well-being each day through compassion gratitude, and connection. Here is a summary of the key papers. Et al. 2018, found associations between higher loneliness and lower perceived social support and a range of adverse mental health outcomes in a systematic review of 72 studies. Watkins and Amp, Roberts, 2020, reviewed research on rumination, which they defined as repetitive and passive thinking about distressing circumstances, and found it led to prolonged anxiety and depression through several mechanisms. Barton and Amp, pre-Y. 2010, reviewed the literature and found evidence that short-term exposure to nature and green exercise led to improved mental well-being, with higher doses and frequency associated with more significant benefits. Creedy, Tynan and Amp, Harms, 2017, conducted a meta-analysis of grit studies and found a weak to moderate relation between grit and some performance and retention outcomes, but Leela evidence that grit predicted life satisfaction or physical health. In two studies, Duckworth et al., 2007, found that grit, defined as perseverance and passion for long-term goals, predicted educational attainment and retention over and above IQ and Big Five traits. Duhigg, 2012, examined the impact of habit formation and change using case studies and research reviews. He found that habits significantly influence daily life but can be changed through awareness and substituting routines. Gilbert et al., 2010, Developed and validated through several studies the forms of self-criticizing slash a hacking and amp, self-reassuring scale or FSCRS. They found links between different forms of self-criticism, self-reassurance, and psychopathology. Huberman, 2021, described how short-term rewards led to activating dopamine circuits involved in motivation and reinforcement learning. He suggested developing deliberate reward schedules or reward hygiene to maintain motivation. Lieberman and Amp, Long, 2019, reviewed research on dopamine and concluded that appropriate levels facilitated motivated behavior and a sense of well-being. However, problems arose with too little or too much dopamine activity. Linehan, 1993, developed dialectical behavior therapy, or DBT, which combines cognitive and behavioral strategies with mindfulness and acceptance-based approaches. DBT is effective for problems including borderline personality disorder. McGonagall, 2012, described how willpower is like a muscle that can be built and depleted and suggested strategies for improving self-control and boosting motivation. 
In two studies, Oten and Amp, Cheng, 2006, found that people who exercised regularly over several months showed increasing self-regulatory ability and coping skills. Exercise may strengthen self-regulation through biological and psychological mechanisms. Peters and Amp, Bushel, 2010, found in Infamary study that people who engaged in episodic future thinking, envisioning themselves in a future scenario, had greater activation in brain areas linked to perspective value guided choice and self-control. This may underpin the effects of future focused intervention techniques. In two studies, Rensberg et al. 2009, found that acute exercise reduced attentional bias to both smoking-related and general cues in temporarily abstinent smokers. Exercise may influence cognitive processes linked to addiction and craving. The study explored the relationships between stress, sleep, well-being, and demographic factors in a large sample. Key findings, higher stress and poorer sleep were associated with reduced well-being was higher in older participants with higher education levels and income. Stress and sleep problems were lower in older participants and those with higher education slash income. Women reported higher stress and more sleep problems than men. Ethnic minorities reported higher stress than majority groups. The Negative Core Beliefs Inventory, NCBI, assesses negative beliefs associated with low self-esteem and depression. It has 30 items across six domains, worthlessness, incompetence, lack of control defectiveness, unpleasantness, and pessimism. It shows good reliability and validity. The biology of human behavior is complex, involving interactions between genes, epigenetics, neural pathways, hormones, life experiences, reasoning, environment, culture, and social dynamics. Our reactions and behaviors are often automatic, but we can work to overcome problematic learned responses. Mindfulness, self-awareness, and cognitive techniques can help reframe thoughts and behaviors. Positive effect is associated with lower inflammation. Interpreting anxiety as a facilitator rather than a hindrance is linked to lower emotional exhaustion and better performance. The most common regrets of the dying are, not pursuing dreams, working too hard, not staying in touch with friends, not expressing feelings, and not valuing health. Making meaningful life changes often starts with awareness of values and priorities, setting clear goals, taking small, consistent actions, and dealing with obstacles and setbacks with self-compassion. Close relationships, reducing stress, and finding purpose through work or hobbies help create a meaningful life. The summary outlines the main findings and conclusions from the research papers and books referenced regarding stress, well-being, human behavior, regrets of dying, and living a meaningful life. The key factors contributing to well-being and a meaningful life and strategies and techniques for cultivating them are highlighted. Book link click here.